It's been a while since I've reviewed any Bear Dynamic headphones and I just had to scratch that itch of wanting to review one of their latest headphones. These are the Bear Dynamic DT700 Pro X. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and a big thank you to Bear Dynamic for sending me their demo unit to review. All thoughts and opinions are my own. I've usually not been a fan of closed back headphones. I do prefer open backs for listening pleasure because they do have a slightly more expansive sound but I just did want to see what these are all about. So let's jump into this review with their build. Right from the unboxing to the moment you handle these handcrafted German headphones, it's very clear that the people at Bear Dynamic really did want to make these feel as premium as possible. These come in a 100% recyclable box which opens up to reveal the headphones. Under them, you'll have to take the packing material out to open a box within this box that holds a carry pouch for these headphones, as well as not one, but two cables for them. One is a 1.8 meter cable and the other is a 3 meter cable. Perfect for when you want to use one with a close range amp, or the longer one with a mixer on the other side of the room. Then you also get a slew of literature which includes the manual and a Pro X guide to all their latest products. Both cables provided have a mini XLR cable on the headphone side and a 3.5mm termination on the other which come with a screw-on quarter inch adapter which sits quite flush. The mini XLR side has a latch and lock system on it so it won't pop off easily unless you press it to unplug it. Having a detachable cable is a nice welcome compared to their older generation products. The cables are quality ones which don't look like they'll give up anytime soon or without putting up a fight. The finish of the headphones scream luxury. The yokes have a matte finish with the model name on them which reflects light thanks to being a glossy finish. The arms holding onto the yokes have a brushed metal finish and these can be adjusted thanks to the help of indentations on the inner side of the headband. The headband being made of spring steel is strong and very unlikely to give up anytime soon despite being flexible. It does have a nice tension when worn and at no point feels like it'll slide off or fall off your head. It has a soft cushion that sits atop your head which is rather comfortable to use over longer listening sessions and is easily replaced should you ever need to get a new one. But the most comfortable thing about these are the velour ear pads they've chosen to use. Somehow they've managed to make these even softer yet more comfortable than their previous generation pads. Every time you put these on it's almost like lying down in bed with your favorite pillow and these somehow manage to breathe well despite being a closed back set of headphones. They have stuck to their roots when it comes to leaving the headphones wires exposed. Some people didn't like this because they felt it would get in the way, but I've never really had issues with handling these. It does give a funky look to them. So the one thing I do find a bit weird about this entire build is the amount of branding on it. Now, sure, the Yokes do have the model written on them, which is the DT700 Pro X. That's pretty cool, but there was no real need to put a, a large amount of Bear Dynamic branding on them because these are definitely Bear Dynamic headphones which you can tell from a mile away. It's got the Bear logo branding on both ends and sides of the cable, the same on the pivot points holding the yokes, branding on either side of the headband, the Bear Dynamic name on top of the headband in a similar style as what's on the yokes and one on the pull tab for the inner cushion of the headband. Now these do not come with any features so you don't have any batteries, any active noise cancelling or even a microphone for that matter. These are built solely for sound and primarily for a lot of people in recording studios. Uh, a lot of people have been using past generation headphones for recording or even editing. So this is largely catered towards that crowd. But these also do make a very good set of leisure listening headphones. These come with 45mm dynamic drivers and the ear cups are large enough to hold two TWS earphones in them. So this should be comfortable enough even if you have larger ears. These are also relatively easy to drive considering they've got an impedance of just 48 ohms. Now you can drive these very easily through your cell phone, but I think if you drive them with a dedicated amplifier, it will sound a bit fuller. On paper, these do have a rather impressive frequency response. These handle frequencies as low as 5 Hz, pushing all the way up to 40,000 Hz. On a volume front, because these are so easy to drive, you can plug them into your phone, iPad, or even computer into the 3.5 mm jack, and you don't really need to pump it up anywhere past 55 or 60% volume. While listening to audio from my iPad, I never found the need to go anywhere above 55 to 60%. When I plugged into my shit desktop amp, I never had to go past the 12 o'clock position on low gain, 
and a similar output at high gain at a little over the 9 o'clock position. These headphones remain full sounding without missing any lows and highs no matter the volume you sit at. Even down low at 5% volume from my desktop amp, these retain their confidence, never doubting themselves. But having said that, they lose their roundedness at lower volumes when connected to my iPad. This pretty much boils down to your hardware and the fact that these headphones make it very clear to you if your hardware is lacking. Sound stage on these is impressive for a set of closed back headphones, but I think your experience may vary depending on the hardware you're using. Listening to these from my iPad, the sound did seem very focused, almost as if the sound was emitting from a tennis ball from within my head. But when I shifted over to my topping DAC and shit amp, the sound suddenly did have a certain expanse to it and did seem like it was coming from a little out of the ear cups. Depending on your gear and the source file you are listening to, these can show off a little bit of vertical stage as well. Some highs do give the illusion of coming from slightly above your eyebrow line and the lower frequencies do give the illusion of coming at you from your jawline. Imaging on these is just terrific and it's been a real joy reviewing these headphones because usually I'm testing out a whole bunch of TWS earphones or budget IEMs and this is just a world of enjoyment compared to those. Now anything a high res audiophile can throw at you, these handle with absolute ease. If you like listening to music with your eyes closed like I do, these can produce an almost holographic image, making listening to vocals, jazz, orchestral or even acoustic music quite enjoyable. And I think perhaps they may not image as well as their open back counterpart, but I don't have them with me to compare the two. Not that these lack in this department at all. High frequencies are like the guy who places second in class. They're sharp but not overconfident. They come to you with detail and softness that stays clear from hurting the ear. There is certainly an accentuation in this range, making these sound a bit on the rich side, which makes them come close to being a bit sibilant, but these don't really cross that line. Thanks to the combination of how well these image and their frequency delivery and response, soft cymbal hits, horns, strings or even percussion instruments come at you cleanly and well structured. These have a very close to trueness tone in their delivery in this range despite being tweaked a bit. Having all that headroom up to 40,000 Hz does seem to make instruments in this range come across to you quite effortlessly. Listening to Alan Taylor's Color to the Moon, there's a lot of rich detail in this track between the chimes, guitar and soprano saxophone. What could otherwise be a fatiguing track turns into the perfect leisure listen with these headphones. The upper mids sound like they're a bit on the exaggerated side with the lower mids tapering off. It's certainly not a flat response. Despite the lower mids being pulled back, it doesn't make the male vocals sound nasal. These handle vocals with a soft and smooth approach. The lower mids are slightly recessed but present. Something it does do well is how it handles decay. With some headphones, you lose clarity in reverb, as in it can just disappear after its initial delivery. These let it linger for as long as the producer wanted it to, and it adds that much more information to a listening session. Listening to Steely Dan's Babylon Sisters, Donald Fagan's vocals sit slightly further back in the stage. Decay of his vocals are not forgotten with these headphones, and the six backup female vocals come defined, with terrific separation from each individual's performance. It's very apparent that Steely Dan are perfectionists in the studio with their mixes, and this track is a testament to it. Low frequencies is where these headphones shine. Your ears will be treated to quality bass, and this does have a flat response compared to the mids and higher frequencies. Thanks to no exaggerations in this range, your mids stay untouched and don't lose detail. But that lower mid-range dip sounds like it bleeds into the upper bass range, making some lower range woodwind instruments sound slightly thinner than they should. But the mid bass to lower bass range is hefty and boy do these headphones like to play back those frequencies. I certainly don't doubt the fact that these can go as low as 5 Hz. Listening to Hans Zimmer's Time, not only did I realize how terrifically dynamic these headphones are, but that there is a sub-low frequency that plays in the distance, nearer the end of the track, when that wall of sound dies down. I always thought it just transitioned to a few chords on the piano, but there is this low rumble you can hear with these. Speaking about its dynamics, if you've heard a high-res version of this track, you'll know it starts almost as a whisper, then swells to a monument of sounds. At no point during this track did I feel the need to increase the volume in the start of the track or reduce the volume in the later half. These headphones are able to carry your music over to you without shouting at any point in time. Now there are headphones that do this, but these are very evidently not those. So to sum up, when it comes to their build, these are absolutely top class. Uh, I think there are headphones that cost two or three times the amount of these that still use plastic. But in this, the, the fact that you see brushed metal on the headband is 
it is a feel good factor when you pay for these and end up using them and see them sitting on your desk now i know for a fact these things have been put together really well especially since they've been handcrafted in germany uh, i do have a set of beer dynamics over my left shoulder that i've had for maybe about 7 or 8 years i have had no issues with these uh, i've shifted cities i've shifted apartments and at no point have these given up they still work like they did the day i got them when it comes to the comfort uh, i have used these over leisure listening sessions but i've also used them for a little bit of editing on my system and i can honestly say i have sat with these for quite a while over my years it can start feeling a bit hot uh, during the hot months and when you don't have any air conditioning in your room i've had these on for maybe over 1 and 1/2 hours and at no point did i really feel any discomfort like i do with some other headphones now the thing i mentioned about the branding now it's it's cool to see how much branding they have bothered to put on this it it definitely does feel premium and up, up market honestly i'm just being very picky because it's very difficult to find something negative with these headphones i i've usually really liked what bear dynamic does with their build and with their overall sound as well when it comes to the sound i've never really been a fan of active listening or critical listening whenever i've listened to a set of close backs because i usually use things like the bose qc35s or the sony xm4s uh, as, as close backs primarily to travel so uh it's just casual listening casual movie watching so when it came to these headphones in particular i wasn't expecting too much from them but having tested these over the last few days i think that i'm okay ditching my active noise cancelling sets and moving to this because these do sound nice yes they are a bit big and bulky you can't fold them in uh, on yourself like you can with a pair of sony's or bose headphones uh these these are not built to be portable they they're meant to be in a studio or your your bedroom on a stand or on your desk but if you are okay with their size these would also make for a terrific travel set of headphones if you're doing editing on the go and in fact i think these should work reasonably well with the new macbook since uh they've got a higher impedance uh, output jack not not that this does and need a higher output because these are as low as 48 ohms but having a slightly better amping from those computers will make it easier for you to have a portable studio if you were to carry these headphones around now one thing i did do to test these headphones out is i was jumping between my ipad my shit amp and an old console that i had from my audio engineering days and i can honestly say there is a significant difference between each of these devices because for one i don't think the ipad has a strong enough or good enough amp to boost these headphones as much as they need to be the shit amplifier is terrifically powerful but it is a tube amplifier so there's bound to be that little bit of warmth and coloring from the tube the minute i switched these to the mixer all of a sudden they just became terrifically analytical and i can see exactly why a lot of studio people would like using these especially for monitoring while they're recording or even editing because uh things sort of get a bit sharper imaging gets Uh, that much more precise well because there were no tubes involved of course but i think i see why a lot of people have been choosing bear dynamic for their studio work and uh, i haven't tried the dt770 pros but i can see where this is coming from it's very evident that these would do very well in a studio environment these do have terrific detail retrieval so even if you're sitting in a studio and you want to figure out or fine tune your mix i think these would work very well but also these work very well as a leisure listening set of headphones because If you do want to listen to how the artist intended for you to listen to their music, I think these can be a very good set of headphones to listen to if you are into close backed headphones. So, would I recommend these headphones? Well, it's very difficult not to because Bear Dynamic they know what they're doing. They've been in the industry for almost 100 years now. And to back this quality build and performance, uh, these headphones do not come with a 1 year warranty like most other headphones and electronics do. These come with a standard 2 year warranty across the globe and the thing is once you go past the 2 years you start wondering oh gosh now what if a uh, driver packs up or what if my headband packs up the thing is the headphones over my left shoulder these are the Bear Dynamic DT990 that I mentioned earlier that I've had for a few years these were originally made in the 1980s and honestly even if you go over to a Bear Dynamic service center today and say I think one of the, one of the wires is packed up or the driver is packed up you still get the components or the parts to replace specific things on these headphones even today and if you reside in india well if you do have to get your bear dynamic serviced there is the main service center located in bangalore so you will have to ship it across to the main office where they will do the needful and ship it right back so how much do these cost well at the time of recording these have a maximum retail price in india of 23988 
but they are being sold for 19,990. Uh, now I remember these headphones and the open back variant, the 900 Pro X, going for close to around 30,000 bucks. But uh, I think these could possibly be uh, discounts during the season sales. Uh, there's no knowing right now if they're going to sustain these prices. Uh, but these are very tempting prices. If you are getting these for 19,900 or 20,000. Uh, I think that's an absolutely terrific deal. So if you think these headphones are for you based on how I've described them and you would like to buy them, there are two sources that you can buy these from. One is headphonezone.in and the other is beardynamic.in. I will leave their links down below for you. So if you've stayed this long, I do presume you like the content on my channel. And if you would like to support it, I'm sure you know exactly how to. I do hope I've helped to make some sort of purchase decision. And of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.